Um, this is the uh, hearing of the zoning administrator on behalf of the Zoning Board of Appeals uh, for the Northampton Zoning Board of Appeals. Notice of this hearing was published on August 29th and September 5th. The only item on the agenda is the amendment to a finding submitted by Stephen Ross for a structure at 115 Bridge Street, Northampton, now by 32A-241 on Dave Bloomberg and, uh, and sitting as zoning administrator, Carolyn Commission's here from the Office of Planning and Sustainability. So, uh, and, and you're together or? Yes. Okay, so. She's on the right. homeowner. Okay, good. Uh, so, uh, so I think because we have read the letter and the application, which is so well done, um, I guess maybe we'll have you see, just do a, a Super brief, uh, super brief sent to two, uh, you know, describing the nature of the application. So, as you know, um, this, the structure is existing from the 1800s, and so on the property line, um, a good portion of it lies outside the setback, but there is a small portion that lies into the setback. Um, so, there's a couple of options for hoping to work with that. Yep. The first one being a um, Porch, open porch structure into into the setback, which is allowed, I believe, by. Um, the right, because that's not considered a violation. Of the Excuse me. It's allowed by right because the porch is not a violation of the setback. And by and the setback, minimum setback was reduced by amendment of the ordinance since the 06 correct decision. Exactly. Uh, okay, go ahead. So now the setback is 10 feet, so right. that allows just a. A small portion of the structure right. is into the setback. Right. So the first um, option, which um, is to put in a, a porch structure, which is kind of an interesting option because it, it makes more use of the structure right on the property. Right. right. So it's not one we're actually pushing it's not, for. It's not the owner's preference. No, it's yeah. not. So the um, the one the preference we prefer is to to put a struct the kitchen on that side of the house right. structure and would have no windows, which would essentially leave the structure looking like it is now as a barn structure with no with no openings towards the property line at all. Right. Which I think is probably the in my opinion it's, it's the, the best option. But that's why we're here. Okay. So it's really technically you're just looking for an amendment to the two thousand six decision yeah. on the application for the finding that allowed the uh, uh, Office works in the office workshop in the barn, in a converted barn, and that specifically had a prohibition on use of the barn for residential use. And so the amendment you're looking for is to delete that prohibition so that it can be used for residential use. Correct. So the barn can be used for residential use. Yes. And the standard is still the same, substantially right. not not uh, not substantially more detrimental. Characteristics in the neighborhood, and um, and uh, I would note that the uh, that first of all, that neighborhood as a whole is is uh, generally more densely developed than, than these two parcels. Uh, there are residences with greater yeah. densities, but so um, and so they're adding a second residential unit. So right. I understand you could do as of right in that front of the house anyway. By, yes, by right, they could always have a second unit here. Would not distract from the character of the neighborhood. And to support that conclusion, I'm also seeing that the only thing that that, first of all, it's going to be a solid wall. Yes, if, uh, if we don't be the notch out. Right. And you don't want to be the notch out. No, that is too out. Our preferred, preferred the side wall with the solid line of the, the kitchen. Yes. And know. the only thing you're looking at is the back of the neighbors. I mean, you're not looking at anything because there's no window, but correct. But it faces the back of the, the back of the garage the over a steep, very steep incline down right. towards the fair. No chance of anybody building anything there, right? And the garage, as you, you see, is uh, very tight to the property line. Right. Which is so wild. actually, I'm not even sure what the setback is on that garage right there, but it's pretty tight. So that might be grandfathering. <laughs> yeah. Probably grandfathering. So, um, I had a gym. Oh. So is there anyone else here who wanted to uh, address or comment or ask questions about this application for the amendment to the finding relating to 115 Bridge Street in Northampton? Yes, just to get on your name and address. Please. Sure, I'm Becky Shannon, I'm 2 Pomeroy Terrace. Mm -hmm. 
And I went over and visited the property the other day, and I'm so impressed with what they've done uh, as far as restoring the home. Mm -hmm. And, uh, you know, it is so nice. I, I feel so relieved that uh, a family has moved into it that is going to restore the building and um, look after it because it's a great property and a great house. And mm -hmm. it just continues that lovely those houses in um, keeping them for the future. And right. I, I really appreciate the care and attention that they've given the home. So okay. I hope that this will not be an issue. Thank Thank you. And, and so how far away is Tupama? Right it's right around the corner? two houses two down. Houses down. So as a, as a very close neighbor, you don't view this request or or change oh, to, no. as, as, de as more detrimental to the neighborhood. No, I find it very much the opposite. Right. You know, um, it was scary to think that the house could go into dis disrepair, right. and they're really restoring it in such right. a thoughtful way. Right. Um, yeah, I live in the big gray house, of the, that house, <laughs> uh, the oh, picture. Wow. Oh, yeah. Those so, are condos? Those are yeah. condos. Yeah. Yes. And so it's just those buildings are just lovely, and it yeah. takes a lot of care and a lot of appreciation to right. put the investment into the building. Right, good thing. I have to say that's one of the most randomly convenient visual aids. That house. Um anyone else here to speak to this? Yes sir. Yeah I just it, I'm and, sorry I was in your name please. Jim Nash, you have an award three oh, yes, of course. And um, that I'm just curious as to what the finding is. I my my good friend Jerry Butker lived in the house next door, and uh, for many years he was concerned about the, uh, the, the barn being used for residential uh, uh, use, and that, um, so I'm, I'm just curious. I know that his brother spoke with Carolyn yesterday, and he said that, that I spoke, that I, I got an email from him that it sounds like the phone call was productive, so I'm, I'm just trying to get an idea. Yeah, the, the, yeah, I'm sorry, the, 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 you missed the, the first part of this, but what's happening is there's a barn that's been renovated, and in 2006, a, a finding was granted by the Zoning Board of Appeals to allow um, the use of the barn for a, was a workshop and an office wow. space, maybe office space, um, and the uh, barn is now, uh, and the, the request now is to amend that finding to delete the prohibition that was a part of that finding in 06 that prevented the barn from being used for residential use. But the fact that what we were discussing a few minutes ago is the fact of the matter is that the barn, the front of the house could be converted to a family use now, uh, as of right, with no special permit uh, at all or other finding. And um, and what and what's being requested is to, to amend the finding to allow the barn to be used for residential use. And the fact of the matter is, from my standpoint, standard I'm required to apply again is would such a change be substantially more detrimental to the neighborhood? And the reality is that the front house could be converted now to two family. By making the barn a two family, first of all, it's just the back corner of the barn that encroaches. It doesn't encroach over the boundary line, obviously. It encroaches within the minimum setback requirement. Um, but that portion of the structure is a solid wall. There won't be windows. Um, and that solid wall faces the rear of the garage that used to be owned by, by Mr. Butker and overlooking a very steep slope downwards. So I personally find it hard to, uh, to, 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 to say that this change would be substantially more detrimental. It's the, the multifamily use is allowed as of right anyway. All that's happening is allowing the rear barn to be used for that purpose, and that rear barn faces the uh, the back side of the neighbor's garage and nothing else. I I, I don't really see how um, how that creates a, a condition that, with a straight face, I could call substantially more detrimental. There are options that the owner has to do as of right. That would include opening up this corner of the, the rear corner of the barn and converting it to an open porch, which I think, 
and which they could do as of right because the porch is not considered an encroachment of a setback. And that, I think, would be more intrusive uh, to, if I were the neighbor, than having a wall that's already there, a blank, solid wall that's already there. So that's sort of my thinking. Does that kind of address? So I just questions? want to say, I'm not opposed to this, yeah, yeah, this uh, structure being used for right. residential use. Right. I'm just that, um, that in terms of uh, Mr. Butker for years was yeah. opposed to out of respect for it and that there was I think at one point that the previous owner had started working in the I don't know Carolyn could, could correct me on this but work had started on that space prior to getting a permit and mm -hmm. uh, there, there was there was some and that Mr. Butker was very concerned about anything moving forward yeah. there and kind of dug his yeah. feed in and um, and I'm just so and maybe Carolyn knows this is uh, his brother who I think I don't even know if he actually owns the property yet because it may still be in probate um, I, how did Larry feel about things when he, when he spoke with you um, so he certainly was trying to carry the water for his brother right. <laughs> at the beginning of the conversation um, and but then I explained sort of that the whole picture of the property and what could be used and how it's just this tiny little uh, what is it like 75 square feet or something of a triangle that is encroaching and sort of the same things that um mr bloomberg stated and um walked him through the scenario of allowing the two families being right by right there and sort of at the end of the conversation he had sort of come to a different point and then he emailed me today and had a follow-up question and i haven't heard anything Right. So is he under the impression that it is, does he know a decision might be made today? Yes, that he has. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. yeah, so he also he could have only have done a touch of him. I have his clothing with him and a block to his house and him there as well. So it's been fully. Well, he was saying how when I spoke to him a few days ago, he had said that some sort of negotiation had started, that that the, the, previous, the, current, owner, the current owner had spoken to Larry about saying, hey, maybe we can work something out. And then he received the notice that this was before the ZBA to, you know, it's like, oh, what happened to that portion? And it's because because this finding is is now up for discussion that that negotiation is, is no longer happening. And um, that, um, but, he, but he knew a decision was being made today. And he could have either submitted a written via email objection, which we would have read into the record and taken into account, or attended the meeting, although my understanding is not able He lives in New Jersey. Yeah, so he's not able to attend the meeting. But so he hasn't stated anything to this point in opposition and, okay. Right. He, he's, had at, he, he's had at least one phone call with you, maybe two, two. He's had several communications. He's the, he hasn't, okay. So feel I mean, free to make a decision. <laughs> <laughs> Councilor Nash is in that. No, I, um, I will say that it could be that this negotiation, and I don't want to speak for anybody, but at one point a while ago, there was a question about maybe buying some land. Exactly. So that may have been the negotiation that uh -huh. he was referring to. I think to. that was prior to us realizing how small the intrusion was into the setback. Right. It's a facade about that. But it was alive, and they might have had a conversation with him. But in reality, if you look at the drawings, the setback is ridiculously small. The issue, so mm -hmm. um, and it's a very small triangle of the building in the rear corner is the second. So I want to be clear that what my what I'm discussing here isn't so much about. I think the idea of this being a nice residence, and I have no doubt that Stephen will create some nice space over here. The, the, the concern that I'm carrying the water for Mr. Budger, who was all about notification and people yeah. knowing, and that this has to do with his property. And I'm making sure that his brother, since he is not here, is well informed. No, I, and I it seems like understand. he is well informed. And yeah, I completely understand. Okay. So um, any other questions or comments? So I'll go ahead and close the public hearing.
Um, and I think I will make a, a, um, a decision to grant the request to amend the finding from 2006 um, as requested in the application. And in support of that decision, I would, I would reiterate that um, maintaining the closed wall on the exterior um, allows the interior to be fully utilized as an additional residential space. It provides for both preservation of the historic barn and flexible reuse. The three acre lot size is substantially larger than the minimum lot size required for a two family on a parcel in this zoning district, URC. There are many residences in the neighborhood that have greater densities and adding a second unit would not detract from the character of the neighborhood. And the project is also consistent with the city's goals and objectives in sustainable Northampton to encourage creation of units within close proximity to downtown. So for all of those reasons um, and the others that have been discussed, um, I'm uh, going to make the decision to grant the request for the amendment to the finding as set forth in the application. Okay. Thank you. Thank, Thank you. you very Thank much. You.